kind of training did the commandos receive? So once they're let out of the internment camps um, and uh, they're sent, they're not allowed to join the military at that point. So they're only allowed to join, well, they're allowed to join the military, but they're not allowed to be in combat. They're not, they're called enemy aliens still, and they're not trusted with weapons. So they're put into something called the Pioneer Corps, which is a labor corps. They don't get to fight. And these guys are just champing at the bit because they want to get guns and they want to fight Nazis. Um, so they're all in this place called the Pioneer Corps where they have to build bridges and you know empty boxes off of trucks. They're really frustrated. They're really angry that they're there. They're put in alien cores, like they're segregated. And then these little signs start appearing in the in the in the Pioneer Corps saying things like looking for people to undertake a special duty with high risk or whatever. And all of the, the guys who would be the ex troops start to put their hand up and say, I want to be part of whatever that is. They end up selecting hundreds of them. They, they bring them to London. They're interviewed by MI5 and all these other things. And so what they're looking for is men who are physically capable, who are very smart and have a burning desire to fight the Germans. And most of, if not all of these men have it, they've, one of the men I write about lost his father in Dachau. They're, they're burning and they need to see that when they do the interviews. Once they're selected to be in the X troop, the transformation only just begins because then they're told after they're selected that they all have to take on fake British names, which is incredible. They have to hide the fact that they're who they really are, which is German Jews or Austrian Jews. They have to take on fake British backstories about why they have German accents. Maybe their nanny was ger German speaking or something. They have to, so immediately they have to come up with these new names that sound very um, Anglican, like one of the men I write about who's Orthodox Jewish Mountford Gans becomes Fred Gray. They all come up with names like Andrew Roth, whatever, whatever sounded very British to them. Um, and then they're sent to do their training, which was done in Wales because the person who ends up being the commanding officer, this wonderful Welsh, not Jewish man named Brian Hilton Jones, he was from Wales and he decides he's going to train them at a small town in Wales. So then because they're commanders, which is very a very elite unit, they, they don't have to bunk in dormitories, they're, they're given money to actually live with local Welsh people. So all of them go live in these little how and I describe all this in the book, it was one of the funnest chapters to write was this chapter about, you know, they're living with Welsh families, there's Welsh food that they're dealing with, they can't let anyone know their background, that they're Holocaust survivors, that they're Jewish. They're trying to remember their new name, they're trying to remember each other's new names, it's really very confusing. And then Brian Hilton Jones decides what he's going to give them is literally the most thorough, thorough training in the British Army, which he does. So for the next year, they're trained in every aspect of commander training and counterintelligence. So for the commander training, it would be things like, you know, taking apart and putting together guns blindfolded, it would be going through abandoned houses, houses and um, taking apart um, mines and bombs before they go off, it would be firing machine guns, it would be practicing landing at night at the loch in the dark and swimming there, it would be amphibious assaults. They learned how to jump out of airplanes, they rappled up and down mountains, they, they became incredibly fit and capable and strong. They were given assignments like stealing things off of a base at night. Um, so they're getting all that training. At the same time, they're getting full counterintelligence training. And nobody, by the way, had ever done this before. You never combine these two assets, the brains and the body, which is what the two are, commando and counterintelligence. But these guys were capable. So then there's, some of them are sent to Cambridge. They learned all of the parts of the German army. They, they learned everything about German base command, everything they need to do, know to do interrogations. How do, how do you get information from the enemy? And then to sort of top it all off after they've jumped out of airplanes and done all this stuff um, at the end of their training, they're dropped off. I think it's in, in like a in a forest in Scotland, if I'm remembering correctly, and to, with nothing, no food, no water, no anything and told you need to come back and make your way back to London somehow. And so like they steal motorcycles. One guy gets arrested as a spy. Brian gets them out of the um, prison and they make their way back. So they have to be 
the best of the best in every aspect of both being a soldier and being a, somebody who does interrogations as well. And they get all of that for a year before they start being selected for campaigns around, the, you know, Sicily campaign, D-Day, et cetera.